In this video, we're gonna look at the blocked pages. We're gonna learn how these blocked pages come about, how we configure the settings, and how we can customize these blocked pages. We're gonna look how we can enter our own logo here, and how we're gonna be able to take this a step further and insert our own code to potentially allow us to raise help desks to have pages unblocked. As we know from previous videos, all the rules are made up from these policies. And we learned what happened was that we can create policies that block pages based on certain conditions. And we learned what these different actions meant. We looked at how we can have a stop rule set, how we can have a continuation, how we can have a complete stop processing, and how we can have a block. Well, we didn't explain exactly what a block is. So if we look at one of these policies and we edit the rule, we can see under actions, we have an action to block. What we also have is a settings, and this settings is allowed, what allows us to publish certain messages based on what is being blocked. If we drop this box down, we can see that there are a number of different settings, including virus found, certificate issues. And the point is, where do these come from? If we go over to the settings section here, we will see, as these, actions, and under actions we have blocked. And under blocked, we can create different settings based on different criteria we want to happen. So if we look in URL blocked, we can see here that when we block a page and we select URL blocked as the settings, we can see that we're using a default schema for the blocked page. We're using a template called URL blocked but we can also customize what's written into the log and certain IDs that are written into the log as well. And this can be useful for reporting or examining logs in the future. So when we go back over here, we can see we've got a straight out of the box default um, block template for social media. What we're gonna do is customize the block settings and then we're going to take a template and we're going to customize that template. So the first thing we're going to do is create our own custom block setting. So we're going to click add and we are going to call this our custom URL block page. Now we don't necessarily need to create our own uh, different settings. We could just use the existing one and change the template or even de create a new template and point it to that. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I thought I'd give you a full overview from beginning to end. And we're gonna write into the log and I'm gonna give it the same ID as 10. Now at the moment, we're gonna use the standard URL block page. So we select OK. And we create our uh, custom setting there. We're gonna go back to our rule set. We're gonna find this specific policy here. And under actions, we're gonna select custom URL block page and select finish. And we can click save. If we go back, to our web page and select refresh. We can see nothing much has changed. If we go back to our settings and take our custom URL block page, we can see at the moment we're still using the default URL blocked template. We can edit this and this brings up the template editor. Now all templates are made up of two, um, two parts. Every template has the standard same text and that is bought from the um, default schema, EM for English and HTML. Down in the file system, we can see how this logical view uh, is represented to physical files. And we see it's called index.html. We take a second to have a look at this HTML page. We can have a look and we can see at the bottom that we have got an area about for assistance, please contact your system administrator. We've also got this bit that says about the optional user uh, acceptance policy and if we just go back to our block page we can see that we've got this for a system part and we can see we've got this company we've got down here this optional acceptable use policy 
So this is where we can alter that. If we come up to the top here, we can also see that we have a um, logo and we can also see that we have a body GIF. Now you may not be an HTML expert, but if we look for this, it's not particularly complicated. We can also see where the style sheet's been picked up from. The important is this part is this percent contents percent. And what this does is it will take the specific message that's been selected in the settings and insert that in this tag here between the consistent theme uh, with the logo and acceptable policy below. If we look down here, we can see our URL block page and come to HTML and we can see the standard text. Your request has been blocked by the URL filter, etc. etc. And down here, we can see that the information that's been provided in the page has been made up of a kind of macro language. So we can see here that a bit, little bit of JavaScript, basic write to document, that's just basically outputting, and it's going to allow it to loop through and list all the categories that it's been blocked under. And we can see the same here for the URL reputation and the media type. And again, if we go back to the block page, we can see this is all represented here. Because I don't want to mess around with the default URL block page, um, especially as I'm learning and I might make mistakes, we want to copy this from making our own custom URL block page. So I'm going to select clone and I'm going to call this URL block blocked custom. And I'm going to give it a file name as well and select OK. And we can see directly beneath it, it has created this custom page. If we save this template and go back to our web gateway. Okay, so we've created this custom setting here. And what we're now gonna do is change the template to URL blocked custom. And save changes. Okay, so just to recap, we go back to the rule set. For this very specific rule here, we are using under the actions block, we're gonna use the custom URL block page setting. It's not the same as a template. We come into settings, and under settings, we're gonna write into the log custom URL block page, and we're gonna use a template URL block page. We go back over and refresh as expected. Nothing has changed. We are gonna open up our editor again. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually change the overall um, top level template to put some more customizable information in. So if we come up to the default schema and up to the HTML, the first thing we're gonna do is put our own logo in. So this is the file system, as I said before, and each of the um, kind of logical settings up here has a physical file. And we also have a folder called IMG. We're just gonna expand the IMG, and what we can do is we're gonna upload our own logo. So I'm gonna upload a new file. And I'm gonna to go to my pictures. And I've now uploaded my logo into the McAfee gateway. What I'm gonna do is now go back up to the default schema, and I'm going to have a look and find where the logo's been placed on the screen. If we look here, we've got logo MWG. And what I'm gonna do is delete this And in between the image tag, I am going to add, and I'm going to add a resource, and I'm going to find my image, and I'm going to select OK. And this is going to insert the tag. I'm also going to change the URL that we go to when we click the image. And I'm going to save the template. Now remember we're saving this for every single uh, page, regardless of the content. If we return back to our test page, hit refresh, we can see that my logo has now been placed at the top, and indeed if we click that logo, we'll be taken off to a uh, different web page. 
Next thing is we might want to put a bit more useful information down the bottom here. So again, returning back to our McAfee gateway and edit. Under HTML, we can come down the bottom here and we can say, for assistance, please contact the system administrator at your And here is where we can put anything we like uh, regarding the system policy. So this is my policy and hit save. Okay, so what we can see is for assistance, please contact your help desk on help desk at silly.net and your telephone number here. Uh, we can also see that this is my policy. Now we might not like the color, um, so we can go and change the color in the style sheet. And if we come down to our files here, we can find the style sheet here, and we can alter um, any of the tags that we require. Now if you are quite adapt to um, HTML, what you can, can do is actually export the whole system um, out of the system into a complete site. You can then import this into Dreamweaver or Visual Studio or any kind of HTML tool. And you can make all the changes in there and then import the whole lot back. And um, this would be quite a good idea if you want to make some quite large changes. Um, so we are going to... Okay, so we're going to take, let's uh, let's say like, okay, the policy heading here, and I'm going to change the color and I'm going to make it a nice uh, green color. So let's put a, a green tag in. And save the template. Refresh. And we can see that that color's come through. So really simple stuff. Next, we can start to customize the individual error messages that you'll get for what you know the kind of stuff that's actually been blocked. So what we're going to do is come back to here and start to edit our custom URL block template. And if we come down here and go into our HTML, we can start off by uh, changing the title. So uh, this is a social media block page and so because we might you know if we're creating policies to block say just social media we can maybe provide a bit more information in the block page as opposed to just saying this page is blocked um, so we can say information that, like you know but come back at lunchtime and it will be available to you and here we can change that text and we refresh and so for this particular page we can see uh, that has now been changed there um, but we haven't changed anything else. So the final thing I'm going to do is you harness the power of HTML and I'm going to make it easier for our users to request some pages to be unblocked. So we know the classic user that says, oh, I'm trying to get onto a page and it's been blocked. You know, the help desk they send through, almost no information at all, and we need specific information. So what we could do is maybe embed the information about the page into a uh, mal2 tag, and so they simply have to click on a link in that block page, and it will generate an email with the information that we need uh, that they can send off to the help desk. And I'm just gonna show you a really simple example. If we come down to the bottom of the HTML, we can see that in this area here, we have got a table um, and it's using the uh, style sheet info data. And we can see that we've got the URL and this is where it's listing the URL and the categories and the media type. What I want to do is beneath the media type is give a kind of link for the user to be able to click onto um, to generate that email. 
Um, I spent some time just knocking this up in Dreamweaver and I'll paste it in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mail to tag, standard HTML, and we're gonna mail email me, but obviously this will be your help desk. Um, and we can give a subject um, a tag, of what's gonna be in the subject line of the email, so release page. The percent 20 um, is what we need to put in into a, a URL to represent a, pa uh, a space. And then in the body of the email, we're going to put the website, and there's we've got leaving room here to put the tag in. And then this text here will put it create a new line. We'll have a category, and we've got space to put a category in. And then we're going to put a new line in. And then you're going to put a little note, please add the reason why um, it needs to be released. Now, of course, we could make this, uh, and that shouldn't be there. Um, of course, we can make this as long and detailed um, as we want. So I'm going to cut and paste this into my HTML and I'm going to place it here. So I'm going to start off with a B, paste and end with a break line. Okay. okay, we're going to save the changes and we're going to come over to our block page. So I've just opened this up on my local machine where I do have an email client. Um, and I'm just gonna click here. Um, I've just opened this up on my local machine as I don't have an email client on my VM. I'm just gonna click here and we should be able to just about see uh, that it comes up with an email, a draft, a release page, website category, and please add a reason why. But we can see there's no actual information, so this is not much help. So we're gonna go and fix that. Okay, so we can go back in and open up our custom URL block page. And we come down here. I'm gonna actually, before doing that, I'm just gonna add a little bit more detail to just click here uh, to request this page to be really released. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to category. So I'm gonna come up to website first and I'm going to add, and I'm gonna add a property. And what I'm gonna add is the URL, and click OK. And that is gonna add uh, the URL uh, in dollar signs, so it'll insert the URL that's been blocked. Okay, so I've added the URL, now we just need to add the categories, because obviously it's useful for us to know what the category the website's been blocked under. So I'm going to add um, property, and I'm gonna to go to the same as what's already been used above. So it's list, uh, list dot of category. To string. And we've got parameters. And we're going to properties. List of categories by name. Oh. So URL categories and select recently used and select OK. And OK. And we select save template. And we come back to our website and just hit refresh. Okay, so we've got click here to request this page to be released. And hopefully you can just see in there a new draft email has been created. And we've got the website equals Twitter and the category equals social media, and blogs and wiki. And please add a reason why. Of course, we could make this look better and put some HTML tags in, etc., etc. But I just wanted to show you the principle of what and the power of what we can do by manipulating these individual um, notification pages. And so going back to the McAfee Gateway, what the beauty of this is and why we would do it is that we might have different reasons why we're blocking certain categories. So we might create a um, category block list specifically for um, YouTube and therefore we could then create a block page that says hey we're blocking YouTube but this is because uh, we have limited bandwidth. And of course, you would want that different to being blocking something for malicious websites. You know, this goes against the company policy. Please refer to the handbook. So, 
it gives us great flexibility and also the ability to do cool things like putting HTML tags in to try and speed the process up. In another video, I'm actually going to show how we can harness the SDK kit to kind of streamline the process from a user uh, requesting a page to be unblocked to the IT member of staff being able to click a button and do it without even going into Web Gateway. So I want to thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in another. I'm James Sillett and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact me by any of the means shown below.